Hey everybody. Um, I'm not gonna say I think we're live because I'm sure we're live. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Tim, if you don't know me. Um, and I work over here at NaNoWriMo HQ. Uh, so today, you guys have usually been having Maddie and Maya hosting these virtual write-ins, and they're awesome. Um, but Maddie uh, can't make it today, and I think she might have told you guys that last week. Um, and Maya is on her way, and will be here very soon. But in the meantime, you might notice that there are no prompts in the video description box below, um, and that's just because uh, Amidst all the final week of Camp Nanorama craziness, we uh, <laughs> dropped a couple balls. <laughs> um, so I'm going to run some sprints with you guys at the beginning. And then when Maya uh, joins in, she's got um, an awesome outline ready for you guys, too. Uh, so we'll probably transition over to that. Um, but thank you so much for your patience in the meantime. Um, and hi, everyone who's saying hi in the chat. I can see you guys. Um, I think I saw Julia Peterson in there who had acted as a moderator before. Um, and if you don't mind uh, moderating again today, that would be sick. Um, and yes, so at this point, I think most of you guys have been to a virtual write-in before and I probably don't need to explain it to you, but just in case, um, if you don't know, virtual write-ins are um, just an hour that we get to spend writing together uh, and we will offer you a bunch of different prompts and word sprints. And the word sprint, if you don't know, <laughs> uh, is a writing exercise. Uh, it's a time writing exercise. So we'll give you a certain amount of time. Um, we will offer you a suggested prompt or dare, which you can take if you want and ignore if you want. Um, and then at the end of that time, uh, we'll ask you for your word counts to share how much you've written during that sprint. And then also maybe a sentence or two if you feel comfortable sharing that. Um, mostly because we just love hearing what you guys are writing about. <laughs> um, and anything else that I need to remind you guys about? How are you doing? How's Camp Manorama going? Um, I hope you guys are doing really well, that you're close to the finish line. We've only got a few days left, which is kind of crazy. And I think I hear Maya coming up the stairs. So let's see if that's her. It is her! <laughs> Hi, sorry I'm late. Um, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I think for now what's going to happen is we'll jump into a warm-up sprint that um, I yes. kind of came up. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. Maya's got a script, so we will go yeah. from there. Um, and will you share that with me? So I, I did, can... actually. I oh, just you did? did like, okay, now. awesome. Great. <laughs> yep. All right, so Maya, why don't you take it away for the warm-up sprint? Just let me... There we go. So the theme I came up with for this one is mystical, like legends and such. Um, this is kind of my favorite part of world building, but even works like if you're not world building, like for real world stories. Um, so the warm up for this is superstition. So like what superstitions has your character grown up with? Um, like is, is there anything that they just do day to day for luck? Like um, I have friends in the fencing world who insist on wearing certain socks to fencing because they think uh, it makes them luckier or whatever. Um, so, or my girlfriend knocks on wood to avoid jinxing herself. Um, so do your characters do it out of belief or habit or kind of a just in case kind of mentality? Um, are there any that they find soothing or don't notice because it's so ingrained? And how do they react when they catch themselves? Are they fine with it? Are they annoyed? Um, superstitions build up someone's personal mythos. So what, what does your characters contain? All right. Cool. So um, how long is this sprint going to go for? Five minutes. All right. I will set a timer right now. Okay. All right. So let's go now.
That's time. Yep. Uh, let us know your word counts. And then if you want to share a sentence in the chat description, that would be awesome too. Uh, sorry for cracking my knuckles. I didn't think that would be so loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So how, how uh, did your writing go? <laughs> Pretty well. Yeah? yeah? How are you doing over it with camp in general? I feel like we haven't talked about I have to admit that I mostly just write writing during the virtual writing. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of it is I have all this other stuff to do. Yeah. And then I come to these and I actually write. Nice. And I haven't updated my word count like at all, so I need to do that. <laughs> There's still time. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, writing during the virtual writings is what the virtual writings are for. Yeah. So um, I think I saw a couple of people in the chat who said that they were finally able to make it to a virtual writing. Uh, Cal and Chloe. So hi guys, and to everyone who's made it to a virtual writer for the first time in a while. Hi, we're welcome so, back. We're so glad that you joined us. Yeah, <laughs> we missed you. Yeah. <laughs> um, should we read some sentences sure. and check out some word counts? Um, These are some great word counts. I'm I know. Like Holy smokes. 228, 185, Dang. 100 exactly. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It looks. Like, yeah. That was Tanya Blaze who got that 100 exactly. D draws, we're at 228 words. These are awesome. Tanya loves the prompts. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see what, let me read this one from Rebecca Sparks. Uh, Rebecca wrote 114 words and wrote, oh, Beth had that kind of face, that kind of heart, that Valerie could easily spell out everything she was feeling too. Oh, that's awesome. Um, super curious about the relationship, uh, but it's awesome that I feel like, it's like really nice to have like someone who's like a confidant like that. And like, I feel like it also helps like when you're writing to like be able to yeah. like have two characters who like confide in each other because then oh, yeah. they might that's, say stuff that. That's totally how I get most of my character development really? and backstory. I just have two characters who are close kind of spill their guts yeah. to each other. And then I have these <laughs> huge pages of dialogue. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like being too expository here. Is this getting boring? Sends it to someone else. No, no, this is great. Nice. Like, you can't tell if you're being nice or if you like it. <laughs> On the other hand, the huge pages of just info dump dialogue are better than the huge pages of info dump paragraphs. So. True. I totally agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. What about this one from Daisy Farrell? Uh, in a way it does, Birch said thoughtfully. Leaps can sense talents. They must have sensed yours. And Child of Sky, well, that'd mean you're a flight talent, Image said, heaving a sigh. Oh, cool. I really like that idea of, like, I don't know, these capitalized talents. Yeah, that uh, sounds like really cool world building. Yeah, like for sure. Building. Yeah. It kind of I, sounds I recently, like flight talent is maybe not a good one. Yeah. It sounds cool to me. <laughs> I will admit that I recently spent three hours with my girlfriend at a party, not interacting with anyone else at the party, but just talking about like three different cultures in my world and comparing them <laughs> <laughs> three hours <laughs> yeah that, that's you kind of you wanted to read? uh yeah actually okay sweet so ray uh if they were both alive they may have become friends but both of them are dead and any alternate realities were not to be tolerated <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. any alternate realities were not to be tolerated I know, really that's such a funny turn of phrase it's so good <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. Should we read one more? All right. Fake Blum. I like this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, first lesson about horses. Don't make sudden movements or they may kick you or someone else. Yeah. That <laughs> is a very important lesson about horses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you want to learn that lesson from someone telling you and not through experience. <laughs> yeah. I will admit, I've had that first lesson with horses like three times and it's always the very first thing they tell me. Really? Do not make sudden movements. <laughs> Do not walk behind the horse. For some reason my brother still can't get it, but uh, luckily they haven't. Haven't gotten kicked. Yeah. That's good. That's I have good. a feeling they would learn it if that happened though. So. <laughs> um, cool. So should we talk a little bit more about the theme in the next prompt? All right. So the next prompt is a creation myth. Um, by the way, I'm counting things like the Big Bang among Ooh. creation myths because, you know, that is a thing that you believe about how the world was created. Um, I love creation myths, like, yeah, personally. Totally. Um, I love having multiple different ones in one world for different people and mm -hmm. then comparing and debating about it. Um, and they can get really, really surreal. Do not be afraid to have them be very, very surreal. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so this is exploring what creation myth your character grew up with or believes in or both you know yeah. um or even what their favorite one is even if it is neither of the other two Ooh, i like that idea too yeah because like i love the norse version of the creation myth but i did not grow up with it and it's not the one i believe <laughs> <laughs> no i do not believe that the world was created by the slight by the slaying of a giant like well a giant <laughs> um for one all these gods start popping up out of like nowhere <laughs> it's like where did they come from <laughs> were they just always there and you were not told of them uh i think this is also like a really cool time to think about creation this because you're coming to the end i mean a lot of you guys are coming to the end of your first draft of your writing project um and it's nice to kind of like do some reflection on like the start on the beginnings you know um just because a lot of times um I mean, depending on what kind of writer you are and what kind of story you're writing, um, endings, like, it's a nice way to kind of, like, bring it back to a circle, right? Uh, bring it back in a circle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what creation with your um, character beliefs can tell you a lot about them, too. Like, mm -hmm. if they believe in a more scientific one, they're probably not terribly religious. If they believe wholeheartedly the one they grew up with, they're probably more dedicated to the faith that they grew up in, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. If they believe something entirely different, then, you know, how did they come to that belief? Yeah. It's fun. Cool. All right. So we're going to go how long for this one? Uh, we've been doing 10 minutes recently. Okay. We will try 10 minutes. Yeah. Also, you can totally compare creation myths. Like, I have, like, some shapeshifters and Jin who just whenever they get together are like, no, no, you are completely wrong. That is not the right way that the world started. <laughs> Clearly that is. <laughs> and, like, they're not antagonistic over it, but they have this kind of superiority rivalry thing going on. It's hilarious. Sweet. All right, let's go.
five minutes left on this spread.
is time. All right, let us know your word counts and then sentences, and if you use the creation myth prompt or not. Remember, prompts are totally optional. Of course. Yeah, so if it doesn't work mm -hmm. for you, totally feel free to ignore it. Um, I saw a couple of you guys. Uh, Faith said before that she's handwriting right now, which is awesome. Very um, impressive. I know that one of our staffers, Shelby, who's downstairs, she hosts you sometimes too, uh, but she hand wrote for NaNoWriMo last November. Um, I feel like it just like would cramp my hand up. Oh, yeah. You know? I haven't, I can't even remember the last time I hand wrote something really long. But, I do. Yeah? I had, I had hand cramps. It was like, I only got like five pages. <laughs> 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 hey, yeah, it's slower too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Captain Elizabeth is writing on her phone. Well, that's another impressive thing. I that's can't do that awesome. without like major typos. I can't write on a computer without major typos, but at least this way it's less and I have spell check. That's so cool. And I not, know. Like, yeah. auto <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I saw Kamara, you were asking about word crawls. Um, I don't think we've done word crawls since November, um, but probably in the once NaNoWriMo season kicks in, uh, we'll try to do some more word crawls during virtual write ins. Um, so we see you. We'll try to get that happening. Um, cool. Should we yeah. read some word counts? Sure. Oh, I wrote a thing I liked. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is just, I ended up writing about a gin and a shape shifter bickering back and forth over the creation list. I love and it. one of the answers is, um, and second, of course, mind can exist outside the body. What do you think the wind is? Air? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, it's hilarious. They're like best friends, but they're just getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also saw Evelyn. I'm sorry, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong, I'm sure. Uh, but Evelyn von Marek, who is saying that sometimes it's so difficult to write quickly, feels like I'm dragging through the mud right now, and yet I'm so far behind. Do you have any words of encouragement for Evelyn? Well, I mean, I get that too sometimes when it's just like, even when you're trying to write quickly, either you keep messing up, so you're going back, or you have no idea what comes next. It happens, it usually passes, and even if you're a slower writer, as long as you keep doing it, you're not like going to fall behind. Tortoise in the hair. Yeah. We have whole parables about this, seriously. <laughs> I totally agree with Maya. I think the fact that you're still persevering, that you're still putting words on paper, yeah. like that's kind of really uh, something to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and I mean, with these even, what you can do is you can, you know, write down your thoughts on the prompt and then come back to it later, mm -hmm. right? It's not like the only time you're ever going to write in this prompt or in the five, 10 minutes we give you. Totally. And offering yourself some grace and really focusing on like, uh, being able to give yourself some pats on the back for uh, committing to your creative process at all, like I think is a really important part of not getting too sucked down into the despair or to the difficulty of oh, being yeah. in the middle of your book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, here's a thing that I liked. Julia wrote it. Um, okay. They're not looking for hazardous or for hazards or dangers, like two living girls hidden under one of the empty beds. Ooh. It just sounds incredibly entertaining. <laughs> I was going to say it sounds creepy. Yeah. Well, a little bit, but I just saw the image of like two small girls hiding under a bed waiting to pounce on someone. Creepy. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking more pounce like what my brothers do where they come out of nowhere springing at the top of their lungs. Right, right, right. <laughs> I just saw Ghostbusters this weekend, <laughs> so my mind might be just like in an eerie place. Uh, um, all right, cool. So Bobo Bottle 2 wrote, that wasn't a point in history, Roberto protested. It wasn't up to you, Robert. I told him. He shot me a look. I gave him one back, and we started to have a facial expression war. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I've definitely had some facial expression wars, particularly with my sister. Um, did you find one you want to read? No, just Julia's reaction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, this one's from Kingdom of Summer, who wrote 231 words. Uh, didn't tackle any creation myths, but wrote, uh, Living with betrayal, it gets easier, and I am sorry for what it's worth. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, intense. Oh, yeah. Curious what happened there. Did they do the betraying or no? Did the speaker do the betraying or no? <laughs> the best and worst things about getting like the single sentences is you get like suggestions of I what's know, going on. I know. And then you <laughs> have to jump to your own conclusions. 
I always get so curious about people's um, stories. Uh, all right, cool. All right. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Let's do it. Awesome. So the next prompt is local lore. So um, most places have location-based mythology, whether that's the river that you're not supposed to go to because it's like after dark because it's haunted. My school actually supposedly had ghosts on the second floor of one of the buildings cool. that had so much of a reputation behind it that janitors refused to go there after dark. What? Yeah. <laughs> we also had a bomb shelter under one of the buildings. I went to a strange school. <laughs> I mean, it was closed off, so you couldn't go down there anymore. Right. But it was there. We saw it when they were like, clearing out the pipes. They had like the ground open. It was cool. Yeah. Right. But so this is like, what's uh, what what's a local legend from where your character grew up? Um, whether that's a series of caves or a rock formation or a gigantic tree. Mm. You know, like my neighbor Totoro, giant trees. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, or they could, it could even be like some kind of test, like the firefalls in Brave, where the, only the Brave people are supposed to go to, or if you survive this one expedition, or if you make it to the top, or you don't like chicken out, or whatever, you're supposed to get some kind of divine knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I love things like that, because you can keep it purposely ambiguous. Mm -hmm. I literally have one where it's supposed to be like, if you can venture to the depths of these caves, you're supposed to find, like, the truth of all things. Whoa. And I have a character who goes in. Yeah, and I there's would not nothing want to know there. The truth of all things. <laughs> no, it's and there's nothing there. And so she's left with a conundrum. Is it the truth that there's nothing, or is it that the the legend was never real in the first place? Dun dun dun. <laughs> I love playing with ambiguity like that. Maybe it's real. <laughs> uh, I think this, yeah. is, I think this is also a really good way to get at setting in a way that's like sort of unique, oh, yeah. you know, because like like Maya was saying, like. Um, these local le this local lore or whatever oftentimes is tied to kind of like the physical things that are around a uh, character um, oh, yeah. and so kind of thinking about how setting can influence your plot um, that's something that's uh, particularly interesting I think about this very well written prompt Maya. Thank you. <laughs> and this works even if you're working in like a city like um, in my area I live in kind of a suburb but um there was an accident where someone died biking and they put up a ghost bike near at uh, the intersection for a while and there were flowers and stuff and it was that counts as local legend too especially like if you have um an ongoing instance like that mm -hmm. you know like the the legend doesn't die out they took the ghost bike down after a few weeks so that's not so much of a self problem <laughs> but still uh, all right, so let's go for, considering the time we got left, we're going to go a little shorter this time. We're going to go right. seven minutes. So let's start right now.
Three minutes left in the sprint. All right. All right. Well, cool. Um, let us know your word counts. Let us know your sentences. We want to know everything. Um, <clears throat> uh, also, though, shout out real quick to LAG, who just hit 130K words. That's insane. Very impressive. Congrats. Um, that's amazing. Um, and then I saw a couple of you guys talking about feeling a lack of motivation and inspiration, Ruth and Amelia. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with writer's block? I'm terrible at dealing with writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> it usually leaves me throwing up my hands and storming off and going, I'm just going to watch cartoons for the next who knows how long. <laughs> or read a book or whatever. Actually, I have found right, um, reading is really good for writer's block. Oh, nice. Especially if I'm reading stories I really enjoy. It gets me thinking about stories. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not thinking about my story, I'm thinking about some story. Totally. And then I have all these spin-off ideas of how it could have alternately ended, and then I can bring that around to my characters. And It can be a very long, winding loop, but yeah. it does eventually get me there, and nice. it's enjoyable in the meantime. <laughs> Or um, I go and rant someone's gear out, off about my story. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> uh, Ruth, I would say um, you said in particular that you know you're used to writing at a particular time, um, and if that's the case, like I think that can be helpful, really. Oh, yeah. um, if you kind of set a routine that, like, where your brain kind of just naturally starts to be like, oh, it's this time. That means it's time for me to write, um, and that works for you. That's awesome. Um, I'd say though that if you are at a point where like for whatever reason you can't write during that time anymore and you need to shift kind of tracks, um, I know this is kind of like, it's hard to do, but like just really like sitting down and um, 
I'd say maybe if you're really feeling a lack of inspiration and motivation, kind of going back and thinking back to why you wanted to write this story in the first place. If there's a particular scene that you were really excited by, if there was a character you were really excited by, or if you, even if there was like a trope or like something that you really wanted to like put your own spin on, um, just remembering that and then kind of going back to like that seed of inspiration. Um, and even if you're not maybe in the right place, like chronologically or whatever in your novel um, or whatever else you're writing, your writing project, um, if you go back and tackle that initial seed of inspiration and just write a scene that you like, or you know you'll have a lot of fun writing yeah. or with a character that you really like spending time with, um, I think that can kind of push you past writer's block. Well. I have a document titled Scraps where I just put down la uh, random lines of dialogues or scenes that don't really fit into anything else I'm writing, and eventually they will turn into their own complete works, in which case I'll take them out of the document. <laughs> yeah, but, that's a great idea. Yeah. Also, my secret weapon of um, avoiding writer's block. Chocolate covered espresso beans. Ooh. I eat like six of those oh gosh, and I'm just so ready. <laughs> now, granted, my writing sometimes gets really weird, <laughs> but it's usually mildly coherent and hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Real quick before we start reading. Um, these next sentences and stuff. We have two prompts left, but we have about um, 10 minutes maybe left, a little more than 10 minutes left in this uh, virtual write-in. So let us know if you'd rather have two short sprints or if you just want to tackle one of these um, uh, prompts in this last bit of the virtual write-in. All right, cool. Let's see some sentences. All right. Um, I, admit, I wrote one that I find hilarious. Go for it. Um, despite this, Fen was not an overly religious person. Oh, he believed in gods well enough, but they did their things and he did his things. And between the two, the world hadn't ended yet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like, let the, let the gods do their thing. Yeah, that, that's pretty much how he handles it. Yeah. <laughs> like, he comes from an incredibly religious, ritualistic area. And so he's like, no, no, these things exist. And there's like a ceremony for everything, but... <laughs> it happens or it doesn't. <laughs> um, all right. So that Ozian, Ozian, Ozian wrote, if there are clouds, please try and remember what you see. But if there aren't any clouds and it's all inky darkness, look away and don't listen. I like that. It's super, I really like that. I feel like it's a little, um, it reminds me a little of, uh, what's it called again? You know, that one podcast that got super, super popular? Tonight, yeah. Yes. I love that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, in a really good way. There's, there's that one quote by them that I love. If you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. It's staring back because it's uncomfortable. Don't you know it's rude to stare at people? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, misquoted that, but that's about the gist of it. I love it. All right. Let's see. Ooh, I like this. Okay, go the for it. The candle I lit earlier begins to waver before abruptly burning out into a wisp of smoke. The dim, unfocused light above me flickers, and the air around me turns cold. Wow. Who wrote that? Um, Wes's Wes reading. reading. Nice. I love that. It's so atmospheric, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Also, I love candle imagery. So <laughs> I just, I love candle imagery. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> um... Ooh. All right, so this one's from Ray, who wrote 242 words. She wrote, um, not that long ago, he tried to kill her, or at least says he was about to, yet she had no fear. What would have happened if she hadn't managed to take her shoe off in time? Whoa. I'm really trying to figure out how shoes fit into murder plots. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Maybe there was a bomb strapped to the shoe. In that case, taking it off in time wouldn't have actually done much if you're still in the radius. <laughs> Take it off and chuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not more like luck, like you just took off your shoe at the right moment. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, poison? <laughs> was it poison someone's shoe? Or was the shoe just not involved in murder plot at all and it was entirely something different? <laughs> Man, I am so curious. <laughs> Oh, it was poison. All right. Oh, sweet. Good to know. Awesome. All right. Still so here's one that. from um, Andrea Gietz. G Gietz. Sorry. I'm so bad uh, at last names. But okay. So 
uh, Andrea wrote 153 words and wrote, have I told you the story of the sea folk that live in the oceans of Lemdar? Her grandfather asked her. Gwen had heard the story many times, but it was one of her favorites, so she shook her head. I love it. I also, also uh, regularly pretend like I haven't heard stories just so people will tell them again. <laughs> um, and I love that you took on prompt. Super cool. Okay, this one. Oscar twisted the blade around in his hand, sighing. It was the only connection to his mother that he had left. And technically, it was his grandfather. Oh. That's Wait. Like the the blade was his grandmother? No, I'm reading that wrong. It was his grandmother's. Like, oh, got it, got it, got yeah. it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> I was that like, twist. Like some, <laughs> that sounds like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where that could be a feasible thing yeah <laughs> you know in the context of that story um mainly things like soul eater <laughs> um, yeah but i guess that sounds like um the family history uh all right cool so oh, so the blade is made of the bones of his grandmother so it was oh, both oh i love that yeah. so intriguing um, uh i feel like i did you see anyone who weighed in about whether they want to do two short sprints or one longer one? I did not. All right. Well, I guess we'll just do one longer one and All right. we'll wrap it up. And then if you guys want to tackle that last prompt, um, leave your, if you want to leave a sentence in the uh, comments of this YouTube video after it's done, we would love to see those. Um, we still like to see those. All right. So we have the prompt of legends and practices. Any preference? I kind of like the legends one better. Let's do legends. All right. Practice is still fun and totally something you should explore on your own time, but uh Oh cool. People were voting for one long sprint. Sorry, I just right. totally missed it. So yeah, totally missed it. My apologies. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um so practice is uh, practice. We're doing that in the wrong area. Legends. So who are the mortal or semi-mortal heroes that have been immortalized for their actions? So this isn't so much gods who are like, you know, they exist and they do random stuff and so we remember them, right? And they're because they're super powerful. It's more like Beowulf and Hercules, Odysseus, uh, Son Wukong, mm -hmm. the Monkey King, it's like they actually do stuff, mm -hmm. whether that's incredibly chaotic or incredibly brave, et cetera, et cetera. And real life historical figures work for this too. Ah, people who've taken yeah. on legendary status. Yeah, I have one character who is just totally um, in love with Harriet Tubman. Yeah. Yeah, like just too bad. Like, Legend. Totally. Britney Spears, legend. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're driven by the actions of their characters instead of just really big, powerful person influencing the world. Right. Um, so, what legends has their character uh, heard? How have they inspired them? What parallels, if any, can your character draw? Um, and I think fairy tales will also work for this. Oh, yeah. Chloe Nightingale pointed out Hamilton, legend. Oh, yeah. At this point, totally. I mean, oh, yeah. the musical is myth making. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. you know, a story about some figure, real or fictional, that has inspired them because of their actions. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So we're going to go for, let's go for eight minutes to round this one out. And we're going to start right now. All right. Oh, Julia, in response to that, um, Julia commented that uh, the character has elevated her mother to mythic proportions. I totally have a character who did that to a sister because ah. uh, she was not present. <laughs> sister Sounds was, like, like it could be turns tricky. into a godlike figure. <laughs> Again, Julia, do the thing. Also, apparently eat universes for breakfast. I support this. Universes make for balanced breakfasts. <laughs> Bernie Homestuck fans. Frog legs are a real thing. <laughs>
Got a little over three minutes left. All right, um, time's up. Uh, Blobby has been a very trusty timer holder. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's reliable that way. <laughs> um, cool, so we're wrapping up and in case you guys didn't know, this is our last virtual ride-in of the camp season. Um, thank you so, so much for coming and thank you for everyone who's watched these virtual write-ins oh, yes. um, all throughout the month. It's I love great. you all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a reminder that as you guys get closer to um, reaching your word count goal, which we know you guys can all do, you can do it. Um, make sure to validate your uh, writing project after you do that on the site. Uh, if you're not totally sure how to do that, check out your camp care packages. There's some links to our FAQ about how to validate your writing project to make sure you get that official win. You get a pretty cool certificate. Oh, yeah. You get some awesome sponsor goodies and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. You get a little symbol next to your story thing. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like validation. <laughs> you, get a little you get your little symbol. You get this whole package of things that you can scroll through and go, do I want that? Yeah. Like, yeah, that sounds cool. It's <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> uh, and then also just a reminder to back up your writing project as you go. Oh, yes. Um, I think Absolutely. I saw someone here who was like, computer crash, but then thankfully it saved most of your writing. Uh, but it's a good reminder to keep saving. Oh, yeah. Backing up. Worst thing in the world. Worst thing for motivation, too. Having written like this great scene, you're like on a roll, six pages or whatever, and then you're and then your computer crashes and you lose it all. Yeah. And you're just like, I have to rewrite everything. Uh, I've given up on stories for that. Yeah. <laughs> God. Fastest way to kill like 
an actual totally blinking on words like when you're on a trend and you're actually uh, you guys know what i'm talking about on a roll <laughs> yeah but i used it earlier uh. <laughs> you know, like repeating words that close to what i'm talking or writing or anything i am a fan of theosaurus <laughs> theosauri however you say that <coughs> um awesome all right let's see let's read some of these um okay bobo bottle two wrote uh you, wait did i miss something no wrote your rainbow antonio said is there something we don't know about you i could feel myself blush nope i said as casually as i could i would have probably told them but my mom was in the car oh my gosh you can't tell secrets when your mom's in the car Ugh. <laughs> this one um by ray uh 192 was awesome by the way yeah uh, uh, you must rest, Lauren said. And this time, you're not the one holding the gun, and neither am I. So shut up and try not to mess up for once. Jeez, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I want to know about the times that one of them was the one holding the gun. I know. It sounds like there was definitely a time. <laughs> yes, what is this gun being used for? <laughs> is it a water gun, perhaps? <laughs> it's a dimensional carry gun. Is it a regular gun that just has some mysterious purpose we have yet to learn about? I hope it's that one. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, that Ozian, would you rather live under the bell jar or just kind of this never happened? Because honestly, I'd rather uh, no one have to ask about mind warping demons. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't we all rather that? <laughs> well, I don't know. Bill Cipher is pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dorel Elahan wrote 239 words, which is amazing, and shared, have we learned nothing from the ancients? Our culture, our people, our very nation will wither and die if you do this. You may take my life, but you will never have my books. Love it. Got to defend those books. Oh, yes. Um, all right. Should we read one more? All right. Let's see. Kind of one. This one kind of makes me curious. Let's do it. If you activate your locator without good reason, so help me, I will make sure no one will ever locate you again. Wow. That's by Katie Smith. <laughs> I like that a That's lot. Awesome. That is like a brilliant threat. <laughs> and also really curious about just that entire world and adventure and why on earth they're wearing locators in the first place and have to activate them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, shout out to the Under 100 Word Club, uh, the club that I chronically belong to, <laughs> despite my best efforts to crawl out of it. <laughs> it's cozy, it's nice, the people are great. We just, you know, <laughs> we're a little slower <laughs> to write. <laughs> so we're just in the hair. Yeah. Um, all right, awesome. So again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much for participating yes. in Camp NaNoWriMo. Um, it's like, I think it's been our biggest se session yet. We got like, you know, more than 30,000 people, um, writing projects with us this July, which is crazy. Camp just keeps on growing and keeps on get getting better because of writers like you. Thank you so much. We love you so much. Yeah. And you keep guys, writing. You guys are all entirely awesome. Accurate. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd give you like countries if I could, but my world domination plan has not yet progressed to that stage. We'll give you air <laughs> high fives for now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you golf claps. That seems like the only clapping I'm capable of. <laughs> uh, definitely, but keep writing. Um, there's, you know, still a few days left in camp. Um, still time for you to reach your workout goal if you haven't reached it already. Um, and we're rooting for you. We'll see you in the winter circle. Yeah.